making disciples in the workplace. My guess is that most of you fall into one of three groups. So could you please raise your hand if you yourself work outside the home? Okay. And I'm guessing some of you work in an environment that is with mostly Christians. Others of you work in an environment with mainly non-Christians. And could you please raise your hand if you have children, family members, or perhaps someone else that you mentor, and they work in a setting where they have the opportunity to make disciples in their workplaces? Okay, a lot of you. And finally, perhaps some of us here are not thinking of ourselves specifically or of specific other, other people, but perhaps you're just curious about the topic of how you make disciples in the workplace. So you can raise your hand if you find yourself in that category. No matter which groups you identify with, I have four main goals for you from this time together. Number one, I want us to identify some specific challenges to making disciples in the workplace. Number two, I'd love for us to reflect on the blessings and the rewards of making disciples in the workplace. Number three, I would like for us to identify how we want to approach making disciples in our workplaces, to think through perhaps specific routines that might facilitate the sharing of the good news of the gospel with our coworkers. And number four, I'd like to spend some time sharing stories of how God is working in our workplaces and then also just spend some time praying for each other as we um, go back to work on Monday. So to my first point, what are specific challenges to making disciples in the workplace? So I'll share a little bit about myself. I'm a registered nurse. I've worked as a nurse for nine years um, in the hospital setting. I currently work at Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center um, on the labor and delivery floor. So I help deliver babies and I've been there for almost seven years. Um, I currently work part-time, but I've worked, I think about five years full-time as a nurse. So I work in a fairly secular environment where many of my values are often mocked. Specific examples um, of my values that are not popular with my coworkers are my belief that Jesus is who he said he was. Um, a lot of people view the Bible as incorrect, false news. Um, other values that I hold that are not popular with my peers are values of heterosexuality, values of absolute truth, and pro-life values. It can be a challenging for me to know how to respond when I'm in a room of my friends, my peers, my coworkers, and they're all talking about a specific belief that I don't share. It's a challenge for me to know how to respond with both love and boldness. Another challenge that I have working as a labor and de delivery nurse in Columbus, Ohio, is that I have, I'm a mom, I have three kids. And before I had kids, I thought I would be a nurse forever, that I wanted to work my way up into administration, but I had this little baby, and my first day back to work, I walked into the nurse's station, and um, a coworker, a friend asked, oh, how are you doing on your first day back to work? There are probably 30 people in the nurse's station, and I just started sobbing. I said, I don't want to leave my baby, and that feeling has continued for the last six years, and I remember crying out to God, saying, God, like, I just want to quit my job. I want to be home with my babies. And he said, Elizabeth, I've given you, like, these specific um, gifts, and I've given you your education, and I know you don't want to be here, but you're here for a reason. And so while you're here in the hospital, you need to make the most of it. And so, and I felt that he was telling me that I was there for a reason and that I needed to be bold in my faith with my coworkers. So I'll share a couple examples. I asked a couple of friends about their challenges of working in a mostly um, secular environment. A friend who works as a civil engineering firm in Columbus shares that his business has a culture of going to bars after work to, to network with both their coworkers and then also their clients. And there's a lot of pressure for him to drink and to party in kind of this, like, I don't know, networking environment. And for him, that's a real temptation because he ha does have a history of drinking. Um, he also shared that his boss 
his bosses sometimes put pressure on him to compromise his morals. Um, for example, reporting inaccurate billing out, billable hours to the clients, or even other, other things that maybe aren't so cut, and, cut or dry, but where his morals kind of go against what his boss, bosses are asking him to do, so that can be challenging. Another friend who works as a prenatal nurse in an outpatient office in Columbus shares that her coworkers um, gossip a lot and complain a lot, and her unwillingness to join in on that kind of puts her on the outside socially. So I just want to read a couple of verses that kind of speak to this. Matthew 5, 11 and 12 says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way that they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So that is kind of, I, I was thinking about that in relation to when my coworkers are talking about values that I don't agree with, and I kind of feel mocked or on the outside. Um, Isaiah 12, 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song, and he has also become my salvation. So for about, we'll do 90 seconds. I'd like for you to find one person, maybe groups of two to four, and um, we can talk about what are your specific challenges to making disciples in your workplace? And if you don't work outside the home, that's totally fine. You can think of um, any, any place where you interact with people who don't have similar beliefs or any, any place where you have the opportunity to make disciples. So just kind of personalize it to your situation. I put my examples up there. I don't know if you can read that, um, but I will start the timer for, for 90 seconds. Okay, thank you all. So we'll move on to number two, to reflect on the blessings and rewards of working in your environment. Um, so one blessing of me working in my workplace is that I can work closely with people who hold very diverse interests, backgrounds, stories, values, and beliefs. I know I shared this as a challenge, but it also is truly a reward because working together gives us a unique chance for us to come in close contact with each other, understand each other better, and we do have a lot of camaraderie because we go through a lot of joys and a lot of really hard things together. Um, so I feel like work is a way that bonds us in a way that I wouldn't have these bonds with these women otherwise. Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I pray on my way into work that God would flow through me to my coworkers and fill me with his spirit as I interact with them. 
And so I'll start the timer for 60 seconds this time, now that you guys have the idea. And you can talk about what is one blessing that you have found in interacting with others who do not hold your same values or Christian beliefs. Okay, thank you all. We'll move on to number three, to identify how we want to approach making disciples in our workplaces. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light for everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And then 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. So when I think about going to work and when I prayed about going into work over the years, I've kind of followed four, you could call them rules for myself or habits, routines, um, the first one is that I pray on the way to work. I pray that God would be with me, that his presence would be with me and guide me. And then I have a rule for myself to not complain, a rule to not gossip, and then a rule to be open about my faith. So, like, for example, if people ask me about my weekend plans, I'll try to say that I'm going to church, or if they ask about my summer plans, I'll talk about coming to conference. These are just, I found that those are kind of easy ways to talk about my faith in a non-threatening way. Um, and sometimes people like skim over, they want to move on and talk about something else. Um, but sometimes they are interested and they want to hear more about my faith. So I'll ask you now, what are specific rules or routines that you could proactively do to facilitate sharing the good news of the gospel with others? And then if you have time, you can also talk about how would you summarize your approach to sharing the gospel at your workplace? And I'll give you 90 seconds. Okay, thank you very much. And now we're, we're moving on to our fourth point, 
the most exciting point, to share stories of how God is working in our workplaces, of how God is moving in our workplaces. So I'll share just a couple personal examples that happened recently, and then a couple examples from friends, and then I'll give you a little bit of a chance to share with each other your stories. So recently, um, when a coworker asked about my weekend plans and I mentioned going to church, she lit up, which quite honestly is not common, and she um, wanted to know more about my church and my faith. She grew up nominally Catholic, but became a Christian in recent years while she was living in Florida. And just a couple months ago, her family, her husband, and they have two little kids, they had moved to Columbus. She didn't really know anybody in the area, and they were struggling to find a community, to find a church um, in Columbus. So she wanted to hear more about my experience. So we talked about my church, and then I also invited her to um, a mom's play group that I facilitate monthly called the Little Explorers. She came to that and her kids had a blast and she met a a few of my dear Christian friends and really connected well with them. And she was just so thankful and appreciative. Um, So we've continued to hang out. She's coming over to my house um, in August and invited us to her kid's birthday party. And um, she's just so sweet and so open about wanting to know more about my faith and um, wanting to become a part of a Christian community. And that's just been um, all glory to God. It's been, it's been really um, moving. Another friend that I have, we've been friends for years now. She does not believe in God, but she is open. And she seems very intrigued by my lifestyle and by my values. And... Um, Her sister just told me, I also work with her sister. I no longer work work with my friend, but her sister just says, oh, she just loves you so much. Like, thank you for being her friend, essentially. And so before I meet with this specific friend, I pray that God would move in our conversations and that he would soften her heart toward him. Another friend in Columbus, the prenatal um, outpatient nurse that I mentioned earlier, she shared that she had a conversation with one of her coworkers recently about their faith, just where they were at, what they were thinking. And then she didn't see this coworker for a few few weeks, but then the next time that they worked together, she walked by her desk and she heard a second coworker praying uh, a prayer of salvation with the first coworker. Sorry, that's a little confusing. (laughs) I don't know their names. But the first coworker um, accepted Christ that day. And my friend had no idea when she took the step of boldness to ask her about her faith, she had no idea that her heart was softened and open toward the Lord. So I just encourage all of us as we go out, if you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit telling you to talk to somebody, you don't know where they're at. They could be on the verge of accepting Christ or they could be really open and curious. And so I challenge all of us, myself included, just to take that step of openness and that step of boldness when you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And then going back to the, my friend who is a civil engineer, um, the one who has the pressure to drink and to maybe compromise his morals from his boss, he shares that a lot of his coworkers who are either Muslim or Hindu are actually very open to talking about Christianity. They seem eager to hear about what he believes. Um, And he admits that sometimes it does feel like they're trying to evangelize him to their religion, but other times, some of his coworkers, he says, truly seem curious and open toward Christianity. Um, And I'll just share one more story about a patient that I had recently. She came in, she was in labor, her boyfriend wasn't there, he was getting his hair cut, she didn't know how long he'd be away. (laughs) I see you guys laughing. (laughs) Um, But she shared with me that it was a Sunday, I was working on a Sunday, she said that she had just accepted Christ and that she was going, she was supposed to be baptized that day, but she went into labor instead. And I said, oh, that's wonderful, like I'm a Christian, we prayed together, we talked about um, her coming to faith and what that looked like. And she just over and over that day, she said, oh, I'm just so glad you were my nurse, because it was just me and her the whole day, she didn't have other like personal support there until the the father did come right before the baby was born, I'll add that. Um, But I just want to give God the glory for those situations and at times it feels like my work can be a very dark place and I feel like I can be 
a very small minority, but then I, I do honestly believe that God is working and he's working in people's lives and I wanna be faithful as long as I'm there to follow his call. And I'm sorry, I think we ran out of time for you to share your stories now. <laughs> but I just encourage you all to continue to think about these questions for the rest of the weekend. Talk about them with your spouse, with your friends, with your children, and with each other. And um, please share your stories of how God is working in your workplaces. And if you want to share them with me, I would love to hear them. I pray that God will give you wisdom, boldness, and love as you return to your workplaces, and thank you so much for your time and attention.